Well, we are well into March, as you may have noticed, so suffice it to say we've made it through another hot Aussie summer, but no matter how diligent you are, or you were, with the slip, slop and slapping, we all know that regular exposure to the sun's rays can damage your skin. It can, and while skin cancer awareness is getting better in Australia, around a third of us have never been checked, so I took a trip to the dermatologist to do just that. Two out of three Australians will get at least one cancer in their lifetime, but what we do know about melanoma is early diagnosis is everything. Doctor? Hello. Hey, Sonia. Hi. Super nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Natasha Cook. So, um, tell me, what are you here for today? Well, a skin check, mm -hmm. because I think the last one I would have had would be maybe 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so how often should we be having skin checks? Most people really, after a certain age, particularly 40, should be having them annually. Obviously, if you've got family history of things like melanoma, or you've previously had a skin cancer, you probably should start a lot earlier in life. So I grew up in Queensland. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've got a high risk exposure, because yeah. the UV, the further we go north in this country, the harsher it is and the more damage we can get. People don't realise that 90% of our skin damage and exposure comes from just walking around in the sun. I think seeing you haven't had a skin check for now 10 years, it'd be an amazing idea that we have a thorough look at you, checking areas also that you can't necessarily monitor. So do I have to get naked, Dr Natasha? Well, we'll leave your underwear on and we'll work around that, but yes, we'll have a thorough check. I was gonna say, cause you'd have to buy me a drink first. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything new, changing, or something you just think you're not quite sure about, or you've got some concerns? There is actually, just on my collarbone mm -hmm. here, it's like this really rough little, it's almost like a little pimple. So we'll have a nice close look at it with my little instrument here, which is a dermatoscope. This gives me extra information because it magnifies the lesion more than 10 times. Yeah, look, I think this is a tiny cyst. That one is something you That's don't need fine. to be worried about. Mm -hmm. You asked me earlier a little about these tiny white dots. So these aren't dangerous. They're actually little spots. The fancy name for them is gutte hypomelanosis. And these occur from chronic sun exposure where certain areas just decide they're not going to produce pigment over time. Now, there's a little scaly one here that I thought was a seborrheic keratosis. Let me have a closer look at that for you. Yep, yeah, that's what that is. I'd imagine this occasionally might feel a little bit dry or flaky or scaly. These are benign. These are more like age and stage and genetic. Absolutely no problem. I'm going to have a look now in an area you've probably never checked. And that's here between your toes <laughs> and your ears. And this skin looks really beautiful. And behind the ears is really important. Again, more high risk for people who've got very short hair because they're not protected. Yeah. But yeah, you look great. There's nothing there to be of concern of. People oh. often compliment me on the skin of my ears. <laughs> <laughs> skin cancers that come from the sun usually start as little red, tiny, persistent, scaly, flaky bits. Right. They gradually get worse over months and sometimes to the point they can be like a little non-healing sore. If your mole looks irregular, it's got a funny shape bordered. It's not completely symmetrical. It's got multiple colours in it. They tend to be high risk. If in doubt, get it checked out. And do they feel sore? Not necessarily, no. So that's a really good point about the symptoms. Mm. People get obsessed with itchy. Like, oh my goodness, I've got itchy spots on my back. Yes. They must be bad. Which I do which I will check out for you as okay. well. All right. Well, Great. you need to go now because I have to get naked for Dr. Natasha. So how did I go? Well, I've actually got fantastic news for you, Sonia. You're, you're complete what I call a clean skin. <laughs> So like you a have fine wine. Exactly, like an, like an elegant fine wine. Okay, so I'll see you in a year's time. Yes, please. What should I be doing in the meantime? Okay. Sunscreen? Yes, sun protection every day. An SPF 30 and above. Anything new or changing if it appears in the meantime, make sure you reach out, give the clinic a call so we can check it out for you. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. You're so welcome. Bye. Well, you got the all clear. That's the main thing. Yeah. That's right. Best to get a checkup every year. Yeah, I, my mum passed away because of a melanoma. Yeah. So, it's, it's, so you go, don't you, I regularly? Go, I go re yeah, I haven't been for a while, though. I must go. And my kids, of course, I've got to encourage my kids to go, which they do. But uh, this month is Melanoma March, so it's a good reminder to all of us to get that skin check and uh, raise awareness for better sun safety, even as the weather gets cooler. You can head to the Melanoma Institute website for all the information.